Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Have you heard, I don't, you may not have, the NFL draft is just nine days away and it's in Detroit. It's in Detroit? It's here. What? In the Motor City. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people ready to fill all those spaces around that stage. Would you look at how it's coming along? Can you believe it? It's very that stage, it's fun to watch how just quick that stage is coming. I know. For sure. Uh, great to have you with us here at noon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. And I'm Rhonda Walker. And honestly, whether you are a football fan or not, this draft is an experience. It's yeah. an event you're going to want to take in. The event of the spring, many can't wait for it to finally get underway. We are almost a week away. Today, we're getting a little progress update. Sean Lay is here with what we can expect. Good afternoon, everyone from downtown Detroit. We have so much to show you right now. So many new things to show you as the transformation of downtown continues day after day with this incredible moment for Detroit, the NFL draft. All this fencing here around campus marshes, shutting, shutting things down. There's a reason why. We've been watching the stage. I call it the stage for the draft being built day after day. And now you've got to take a peek. We can peek through this fence right now. There it is. It is absolutely enormous. That's on Monroe all the way down the street. And that's the main part where, uh, hey, the players will be called, the, the fans will be there, and that is where the NFL draft will take place. In a couple of minutes, the NFL is going to let us come in here and take a closer look, which is absolutely phenomenal. We'll talk about the new things you'll see. We also want to learn about how this is going to work if you're coming down for the draft. But all in all, we have watched that, uh, they call it the theater, be built day after day and now it looks like it's almost complete and it is absolutely enormous so when we get in there we'll give you a great sneak peek and we'll have much more later on local four in downtown detroit sean lane local four definitely liking that big aiden hutchinson yeah. on the side of that building thank you sean also today we are expected to hear more from the Detroit People Mover about a new lighting that they are installing along the track throughout downtown Detroit, which is going to look so cool at night. Over 40 LED lights are going to be help increase visibility downtown during the draft and beyond. A light show is actually planned for tonight at 830 in Spirit Plaza to show the new lights off. Just into the newsroom, in fact, just getting this in the last 30 minutes, Attorney General Dana Nessel will announce charges in an investigation into former Michigan House Speaker Lee Chatfield. The AG's office has been conducting an investigation for a few years now after sexual assault allegations came to light against Chatfield. A press conference scheduled for 2 o'clock today. We're planning to carry that on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. There is a special election that is happening in two communities today to decide the balance of power in the Michigan House. Voters will be casting ballots today on two vacant seats representing Metro Detroit. In District 13, Democrat Mai Zhang faces Republican Ronald Singer. In District 25, Democrat Peter Herzberg faces Republican Josh Powell. Both of those seats were vacated after Democrats Kevin Coleman and Lori Stone became the mayors of Westland and Warren, respectively. Polls are open. They close tonight, 8 p.m. Also tonight, Ann Arbor Public Schools is hosting a town hall about proposed budget cuts. The meeting is at 6.30 tonight at Huron High School. The district is looking for feedback on how it should handle a $25 million budget shortfall. Last week, the school board approved layoffs, but it's unclear which positions will be cut or how many. In Genesee County, a police arrested a man they say planted a camera in an underage girl's bedroom. Police say the parents of the girl found the camera and police traced it back to 30 year old Nicholas Lee. When Lee was taken into custody, police say they found nearly 300 graphic images on his phone. He's now facing dozens of charges, including 30 counts of child pornography. Day two of jury selection underway in the Donald Trump hush money case. Here's a live look at the lower Manhattan courthouse where prosecutors and the defense are working to seat an unbiased jury. Hundreds of New Yorkers have been summoned for jury duty. They are being slowly questioned in batches and many have already signaled that they could not be fair. The judge presiding over the case also publicly warned uh, Donald Trump about his attendance at the trial, which is now mandatory every single day if the former president does not show up, a warrant will be issued for his arrest. It was one of the most hyped WNBA drafts ever, if not the most, and it started how most folks expected. Iowa star Caitlin Clark 
taken number one overall by the Indiana Fever. Clark is a college basketball all-time leading scorer and a two-time national player of the year. After being selected, she said that she was going to take some time to soak it all in. It's kind of been a whirlwind, but I think the biggest thing and the biggest piece of advice that people have given me is just like enjoy it. Like you only get to do this one time, um, you know, soak in every single second, getting to celebrate with my teammates, my friends, my family, my coaches. Um, it's super special. It is super special. Everything she's accomplished and all that she has helped to do to just further heighten her sport. Clark will play in her first preseason game with the Fever on May 3rd against the Dallas Wings. They're probably selling tickets already. Yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> the biggest cheers may Rakia have come Jackson. from a watch party at Detroit Edison when Rakia Jackson was announced as the fourth overall pick. Jackson played college ball at the University of Tennessee and her high school basketball at Edison Public School Academy, where she won Miss Basketball in 2019. She now heads to Los Angeles to play for the Sparks. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Live Nation, which owns Ticketmaster, could soon be the subject of an antitrust lawsuit. It follows a Wall Street Journal report that the Justice Department could file that lawsuit as soon as next month. Live Nation has long faced complaints. It has too much influence over live events. The DOJ has been investigating the company and its practices for several years. The probe picked up after Ticketmaster's site crashed in 2022 because of high demand for, if you remember, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Oh, we'll never forget that. <laughs> the newsroom was uh, a little bit crazy. That <laughs> yes, <morning>. it was. <laughs> uh, now to some new developments in the impact of social media on children. Yeah, today the American Psychological Association is out with a new report that calls for more to be done to protect young people from the potential dangers. Emily, Ky uh, Emily Aikida has a closer look at the details. The American Psychological Association demanding change from social media platforms and head turning report detailing what it says are psychological threats to young people. The highly respected group writing in part platforms built for adults are not inherently suitable for youth. Youth require special protection. The APA calling out features like endless scrolling, likes and follower counts and push notifications that it says capitalizes on developing brains that are more sensitive to impulses, social feedback and distraction. According to a recent survey noted by the group, more than half of teens reported at least one symptom of clinical dependency on social media, something families described in today's deep dive into the impacts of screen time last fall. It can be really addicting. They can begin to really hinder your life more than they do help it. Instead of liking yourself, it's how much everybody likes you. The report also noting how the freedom to scroll around the clock has been cited as the predominant reason why adolescents are getting less than the recommended amount of sleep. It comes nearly a year after the U.S. Surgeon General issued a landmark health advisory on social media use in adolescents. We see rates of depression and anxiety and suicide and loneliness going up among young people. And I'm concerned that social media is an important driver of that youth mental health crisis. Uh, this is the defining public health issue of our time. The APA writing there's been few meaningful changes since then, but some social media companies disagree, including Meta, the company behind Facebook and Instagram, which recently launched nighttime nudges to push young people to close the apps and now also allows parents to schedule breaks for their kids on the platforms. Without laying out specific changes, the APA says there must be a comprehensive approach to fully address the dangers of an increasingly screen-reliant world. And that was Emily Ikeda reporting. Some states have already taken matters into their own hands. Last month, Florida passed a law prohibiting children younger than 14 from having social media accounts unless they have their parents' consent. Well, you've seen from a couple of live looks outside in this newscast. Got another chance to have lunch. to get out there. Outside, maybe. Go mm -hmm. for a walk. Oh. It looks like it's perfect weather for all of it outside today, Ashley. Yeah, and we're on the tail end of this really nice stretch. So get out inside if you can this afternoon and enjoy it because then we have a few waves of rain chances over the next few days. So sunshine returning at this hour. We'll have a few clouds that continue to mix in throughout the afternoon. But as far as rain is concerned, we'll likely get a nice splash of that before day break tomorrow, but then our attention is really focused in the afternoon as far as the potential for strong to severe storms.
storms between about 2 and 7 o'clock. We're going to talk more about that throughout this newscast, but we do have temperatures cooling down for the weekend. So if you have weekend plans, just note that it'll be drier, but we will be noticeably cooler. 60 in Detroit right now with blue skies up above and sustained winds out of the east at 10 miles per hour. 62 in Howell, 58 in Pontiac, and 60 in Monroe. And we have mainly clear skies. Few clouds have been mixing in closer to Metro Airport, Pontiac, and Mount Clemens, but the sun has been winning out for the most part. As we zoom out, you can see the system off to the west. That's what's going to bring our potential weather for tomorrow. So otherwise increasing clouds today with highs in the upper 60s. We'll walk you through tomorrow's timeline in just a moment.